The message to the world's leaders at Davos and all the United Nations gatherings is clear. Climate change is real. Changes need to be made now and the challenge is immense. One of the recent initiatives to limit climate change has been to flight shame to reduce global air travel and thus reduce carbon emissions. Flight shaming may have value if alternatives like trains are available. However, as COVID taught us, if that boycott is applied to international air travel to Africa, it would be disastrous for Africa's wildlife, its parks, its people, and for global climate change and ultimately for the overall well-being of planet Earth. Why should Africa be exempt from flight shaming? Simply because Africa's wild places, its forests and savannas and their soils, are some of the most important carbon sequesters and these need guaranteed long-term protection. Africa has these soils in abundance in the continent's parks, reserves, and wilderness areas where carbon emissions are accumulated, processed, and neutralized for the good of everyone on the planet. By preserving Africa's parks and wild places, the continent is helping the rest of the world combat the negative effects of their carbon emissions. Preserving and managing parks and reserves costs money, and Africa's rapid rising populations have changed African government's spending priorities. Health, education, housing, transport, community uplift, etc. are where budgets are most urgently required. Governments around the African continent seldom have the money needed to pay the cost to manage and conserve Africa's parks, reserves, and wilderness areas. The funding shortfalls to run these parks are made up by tourism revenues, park entrance fees, and concession fees. To illustrate this point, South African National Parks are one of the best funded and managed conservation organizations on the continent, yet they only receive 22% of their funding from the state. The 78% shortfall is earned from tourism, from park entrance and concession fees. There are other parks elsewhere in Africa that rely solely on tourism fees for 100% of their budgets. At Leckerwater, 24% of the lodge's gross revenues are paid over directly to Cape Nature and to SARS, the South African Revenue Service, in the form of lease fees and taxes. It is not often that going on holiday makes a traveler the most effective conservationist, but that is indeed so when people travel to Africa. Flights to Africa do cause emissions, but flying globally only contributes around 2% of global carbon emissions. As Africa only receives 5% of global tourism arrivals, flights to Africa are a tiny portion of all emissions. The negatives from air travel to Africa are minuscule in comparison to the greater good that tourism revenues contribute to preserving the continent's parks, reserves, and all their fabulous wildlife. Africa needs more tourism. Furthermore, the enormous contribution that the tourism industry makes to job creation, the foreign exchange reserves, and the GDP of many African economies is one of the prime incentives for African governments to keep protecting their parks and reserves. Here in South Africa, one in six people, countrywide, rely on tourism to put food on their tables every day. The world does face an immense climate crisis. We need to demand action and everyone needs to contribute. However, shaming people to stop flying to Africa could very well have the immediate reverse effect of accelerating extinctions and ushering in the rapid loss of many of Africa's last remaining wildlife and wild areas. It would indeed be tragic if much of Africa's wildlife was lost because there were not enough tourist arrivals 
and resultant revenues to pay for the cost to manage and protect Africa's great wildlife sanctuaries. The only way to sustainably generate the funds needed to secure Africa's great wildlife sanctuaries for future generations is through tourism. Tourists must continue to fly to Africa.